Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Welcome to the wonderful world of psychology. On today's lesson, we will be learning about sensation and perception. My name is Eric. Let's get started. First, let's talk about two ways in which we process information in our brains. The first way in which we process things is called bottom-up processing. Bottom-up processing is when we take in different stimuli through our sensory receptors like our nose, ears, and mouth, and piece the information together to create a bigger picture or a bigger whole. Let's take a look at an example to see what it is that I'm talking about. Essentially, bottom-up processing is exactly what it says. We start from the bottom, or the, the fine details, and we combine these details together to create a bigger picture. Let's take a look at this picture. When you look at this picture, all you see is a woman. There's no other clues as to what she's doing, where she's at. When you add more stimuli to this picture, like a clock and a flag and part of the whiteboard in the back, you can see that the woman is probably at some sort of work. To this picture, then, we add a desk and some recycling bins and a door, meaning the lady is at school. After piecing together all the clues and all the stimuli, we can tell that the teacher or the woman is a teacher at school and she's in front of her classroom teaching. We have just created a whole picture from stimuli. The opposite way of processing is called top-down processing. With this way of processing, we start with the bigger picture and then we go down to the fine nitty-gritty details. So basically, we would start with the classroom and then go all the way down to the teacher and to the students. So let's see an example of this. We can tell that we're looking at a picture of a beach because of the clues of the sand and the water and everyone at the beach. We see the whole picture, but now we can actually focus in on little details or little stimuli. Did you notice that there was a tent here? How about this palm tree in the back? Did you see it when you were first looking at the picture? And this boat? Did you pay attention to the boat? Top-down processing says that we'll focus at the bigger picture of the beach, and then once we have that, we'll focus on the small stimuli that make up the picture of the beach. The next thing we're going to learn about are gestalts. Gestalts are organized holes that we see as more than the small parts that it is made up of. So basically, our mind plays tricks on us to make this picture that really doesn't exist. There are different types of gestalts, so we're going to review some right now. An anomaly is something that stands out because it is different from the things around it. In this picture, the little guy is on the way right is different from the other three men, so therefore it stands out and captures our attention. It then becomes our focal point, and we focus on the anomaly more than we do on the other three. To close or not to close, that is not really up to us to decide. When we see a figure and we have enough information to know what it should make, our mind closes up the gaps to create the figure that we see. Look at this picture. Do you see the word eight? Now look again. Chances are you will be able to see four eights because our mind closes the gaps in the eights and we're able to see the eights. Without closure, we would only see eight written in a funky font. Now for a section I'd like to call through the looking glass because our eyes are a glass kind of, you know, we look through them. Do you wonder why we see in color? How is it that we can sometimes see in the dark? You owe your sights to your rods and your cones. Cones, color, colored cones. Cones are photoreceptors located in the retina that are sensitive to color. They receive the color stimuli and send it to our brain. We have six to seven million of these colorful cones. They are concentrated in the fovea part of the area. Rods, rods, I have no mnemonic for rods. Basically, rods work together with cones because they are also photoreceptors on the retina. However, they are not sensitive to color. When you're in a low-lit room or in a movie theater, you can see because of your rods. We have over 120 million of these rods. To clarify, the retina is the part of the eye that is sensitive to light. It is the beginning of the processing of visual information. It basically lines the back of our eye. When you were a child, was it impossible for you to make a picture look 3D? Do you still have problems with this? Sometimes it is hard for us to draw things accurately accurately to make images seem realistic. Luckily, some smart psychologists figure out how to make our crayon drawing look 3D and more realistic. A monocular cue is a cue that requires only one eye to see depth. A binocular cue is a depth perception cue that requires both eyes to see depth. We can tell a lot about an object by noticing the two different images that each eye receives in its retina. This helps us know the approximate position of an object. Let's take a look at two examples of monocular cues. The idea of texture gradient states that the closer an object is to you, the more detail you have from it. Take a look at the picture. 
With the cheetah, you can see its whiskers and some dirt on the rock. But when you look at the background, you can see that the trees and the sky all can mumble into one image. You can't really tell much detail from where the leaves start to where the tree ends. This is because it's in the background. Objects are never in a straight line in real life. Sometimes things block our views. The person with the huge head in front of you in class prevents you from seeing the board. Interposition, another monocular cue, says that when one thing overlaps another, the objects that are blocked by another object appear farther than the objects blocking you. Nicki Minaj is blocking us from seeing Drake's body. Drake is also blocking us from seeing the man in the back with the hat. Because of interposition, we know that Nicki Minaj is closest to us, followed by Drake, followed by that guy. And now for some commercials. Are you one of those people who loves to know about everybody else's life? Do you love snooping and eavesdropping? Sometimes we miss something that I said that could be really juicy gossip. With the new and improved Pina, you will never miss out on any more gossip. The Pina will catch all the whispers and snickers in the room, making you the all-knowing, or better yet, all-hearing. The new and improved Pina is two times larger than before. If you call now, we will double your offer and give you two Pinas. Now you will be able to hear from both sides of the room, and for only $9.99! Now it's time for Word of the Day with your friend, Elmo! <laughs> The first word of the day is timber. Dorothy, can you say timber, Dorothy? <laughs> timber refers to the quality of sound or voice of an instrument, independent of pitch or volume. In other words, think of it as an individual sound an instrument makes. It could be raspy, sweet, rough, eerie, or peaceful. The clarinet and the flute have different timbers because they can play the same note and sound so different. The next word is Randy Jackson's favorite word, pitch. Pitch refers to the highness or lowness of a tone. The pitch of a note depends on its frequency. A high pitch means the sound stimulus has a high frequency. A low pitch means low frequency. Right, Dorothy? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of this lesson. I hope you learned a lot from my video. My name is Eric, and until next time.